Hi, I am looking at this case with the goal of creating space around this upper right lateral to match the contralateral side. And that's absolutely something we can do with Invisalign. Uh, I'm gonna show it with the 3D controls. The initial ClinCheck um, is one just from the uh, Invisalign software. And I don't want to do these molar movements. Uh, the arch is sufficiently wide, um, moving a third molar um, is really not realistic um, and these molars are either going to not move at all or move in a way that is very easily a posterior open bite. Um, we also want to create this space here for that restoration and the photos are really helpful and these are really good photographs um, to see that the patient doesn't have probably a lot of um, anterior buccal bone here. So when creating the space, I'm going to focus on translating or tipping the premolars to widen the arch um, to create that space rather than just bringing um, these centrals buckle. So uh, I'll go ahead and start modifying. And the first thing that I want to do is I want to right click and make all of these teeth unmovable. Then I'm going to look at the premolars and see how they need to move or not move. And really we're just looking for expansion. None of these premolars look really out of place. I don't think a, the, rotating them would be a priority. So I'm going to click on this one. I already noticed that it had a uh, rotation attachment. And I just like to press zero and enter to simplify eliminating those movements. My method is to eliminate the movement first, um, that way I know that that's taken care of, and then switch the attachment, which I'm going to change these to retention attachments um, because the more that the aligner is gripped with the, uh, with the arch, through multiple retention attachments, and that can be through this expansion support or deep bite or a rectangle, all of those are good, or we can even right click and just pick retention. Um, at those atta attachments with horizontal undercut surfaces allow the aligner to be well retained on the arch, and I always say better fit means better movement. Now let's take a look at the canines. I don't think the upper canine really needs to extrude. Um, it's already sufficiently uh, present in the smile, so we can reduce that. And this canine is doing the movement that is the hardest to do, which is this crown root angulation. Um, and that's not a part of the chief concern, especially with a large rooted canine tooth. This is likely to not track the way that uh, the ClinCheck will show. And so I wanna dial that down and then we can take that attachment off. Now, uh, I may be limited to how much we can do any buckle movement with this second premolar because it's already occluding fairly well with the, um, with the bridge that's on the lower right side. So then we're more depending on doing expansion. And if this tooth is in a lingualized position, which fortunately it's not, we would do more crown tipping since it is upright, uh, we can then do more translation. When we do that, you can see the central starting to come more lingual, and that's not what we need to have happen. We just need to create space. So we can look at where the centrals are in a few different ways. You can use the superimposition tool to see how far buckle they are compared to where they started, which is not very, so that's a good thing because I don't want to create a periodontal problem. You can also click on the tooth and see how far this has translated. So point three, I think we're well within uh, a safe zone and we can use the uh, this Bolton analysis tool uh, to give us an idea, okay, the lower teeth are relatively bigger than the upper teeth, which we knew from the undersized lateral, um, but also we can see the size of the teeth. So if this is 7.24, that's almost six, 
then we need to create one uh, and a quarter millimeters more space around this tooth to be symmetrical with um, with the other. So that's 1.2 and sometimes these spaces don't open up clinically as much as we see on the ClinCheck. So I'm going to err on this being a little bit bigger. Last but not least, I'm going to look at where we have these heavy occlusal uh, contacts and let me take this superimposition off. I like to see if I can solve these myself um, rather than clicking the auto resolve and I see that this tooth is extruding so if we just didn't extrude it that would eliminate the heavy occlusal contact. Nope, that's not working as well as I would have liked it to. How about this? And let's see. Mm, not helping. And then let's look at the other side. This can definitely move buckle. That's helpful. And then it looks like I did move this too far. So now that I have the bigger movements taken care of, this is where the auto resolve tool can be helpful. So I don't stay here clicking and clicking. Okay, now we have the case pretty close to set up the way that we want it to for the patient's goals. Um, I'm going to ask for bite ramps as I find them to be always helpful to prevent the molars from passively intruding and creating a posterior open bite. I like to have the same number of aligners upper and lower, so what that means is that the treatment will be, um, one of the arches will be extended, and then um, this is just a, a helpful way to add two aligners to the end of the case um, that you can use as a, a temporary retainer or an aligner that the patient can wear if you're uh, waiting for additional liners or a retainer and sometimes when the teeth move they get a little bit more mobile and can um, might need a little bit of tightening of contacts at the end so those are just in case aligners um, I will then wait for the live update as this will put all the changes that I made with the 3d controls in place right away and then we'll have a clincheck that we're just about ready to approve